Hi everyone and welcome back to another Bork No Game video. Today's video is DK2, a clown battle guide for May 2021. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. One of the first things I want to showcase is the Maho Maho Insight. Alright, so what is happening here is this is showing us all the different bosses. You've seen this before where we face Wyvern and Wild Griffin. Now the things that I want to notate, lap 1 specifically, you can run pretty much the Kokoro face tank team. Usually you can't run this team on lap 2, specifically for Griffin, so make sure to take advantage of this team and run this team at least once on one of these bosses you can run it on boss 3 on lap 1 as well but outside of that you really shouldn't be running it boss 4 or boss 5 all right and note that all of these teams they are technically for lap 2 so if you're wondering you know is this team like the most effective for lap 1 no lap 1 is all about complete aggression by that i mean is you run as many dps as you can and try to avoid running a tank. June is an exception because June has like the defense breaks as you guys know and I just want to say this team in particular avoid it if possible. This is running three defense breaks and when you run three defense breaks at the same time June, Makoto, and Mitsuki you're wasting it and making your other teams pretty much function improperly unless you're doing like a mage comp sort of deal which is pretty much happening at the bottom but honestly try to avoid running three defense breaks on the same team. But let's go ahead and jump right back into this and talk Talk about the orc leader now everyone knows about the orc leader in the sense that he is going to be hitting you very hard and he has a stun now the only difference this time when we're fighting the orc leader is we have ayane so one of the things that you can try and do is to pretty much have ayane stun the orc before he can cast his uv i'm not sure the timing on this in case you want to pretty much run a more aggressive team because what happens here is you can run Ayane on like maybe like this Miyako comp, right? Instead of having Miyako right here, you have Kaori, you know, Makoto, Kokoro, Mitsuki, and then Ayane here. When Ayane can pretty much block that stun or block like a certain skill in order to prevent you from dying, you can essentially keep your team alive and go from there. Ayane is going to be pretty key, I think, for this one in particular because Orc Chief, he's a heavy hitting boss, but most of his heavy hits do come from his skills in particular. And if you can interrupt them, that'll be ideal. But of course, orc leader is sort of cookie cutter in the sense that you run the kokoro face tank or in this session it's going to be miyako or you can run rima i think rima is mostly there because it'll clump all the people together like more frequently so what happens is like mitsuki and kokoro will be within the same ranges as makoto and kari allowing them to cast their UBs much faster. I don't think Lima has to be like 5 star in order for it to function. I think 3 star would be best. Just note that this is advice for lap 2. You can run something different for lap 1 and be more aggro based and actually have Kokoro face tank work on the first lap specifically, all right? The two new bosses, of course, are the Dark Unicorn and the Crab. Thing is with the Dark Unicorn, it's pretty interesting, is that he is going to be hitting the highest attack enemy unit. This is going to be very similar to the way Cyclops functioned because Cyclops was like, hey, you know, I'm gonna hit the highest attack unit. And the team that I usually ran for the Cyclops was essentially like the Hyori Makoto team. And the interesting part about that team, of course, was this one was like, hey, we're gonna hit Hyori first, right? even though it was like topsy-turvy because sometimes they would essentially hit Makoto and then sometimes they would hit Kari, depending on whoever's attack was the highest. With this being said, let's go ahead and look at their stats. Like, how much is Kari's stats? 4,401. Kyori right here, 4,006. Kyori will be able to have higher attack. Her skills are proccing appropriately with Kyori Punch. And I believe, like, Kitty Combo increases her attack. And not Kitty Pal. Not Kitty Kapow. Note that I am missing two pieces of gi here. I don't think Kyori will still have higher attack. But it's one of those things, like, in case you want to, like, trade bulls, like, with, you know, Kari and Makoto. This is the team that I'm probably going to be running on Unicorn in case like I want to try it. It's very different when you're actually in clan battle, right? So usually you have like the Kokoro face tank team, this one in particular, and then you have like the June team, something like this, right? If you can bounce those two teams out between the different bosses, then that's ideal. My plan is very similar to the previous clan battle. In the previous clan battle, I would essentially run June comp on the third boss, and on the fourth boss, I would run the Hyori comp. And then on the last boss, which was pretty much Pig's last time, I would run like whatever I could cobble up together. Whatever we're gonna be able to cobble up together, Together is either going to be a double archer comp or it's going to be the mage comp. Now the thing is with the mage comp, of course it's going to be successful, right? If you have like the units built out appropriately. I think this physical comp is still going to be very viable 
and this is going to be the one that you want to run. Obviously, you can't run Mitsuki. You have the Kokoro face tank and you have Mitsuki right here. Then you cannot run Mitsuki on this last page right here. You know, feel free to substitute her with the appropriate unit, whether it's Shinobu or what have you. I might try running Shinobu on Unicorn, possibly. But Shinobu might also work on Orc Chief. Who knows? Draw the attention of the fact that he stuns, right? Maybe we can have it so that when he stuns like three closest units to him, then you can avoid having someone else stun. Like, so for example, the team would be something like Kaori, Makoto, Shinobu, Yori, whoever in the back. Maybe Mitsuki. And then Shinobu would get like, you know, the dad to get hit or someone else instead of like Kyori getting stunned or maybe even Mitsuki. Of course, Kaori and Makoto being so close to the Orc Chief, they would probably get stunned. But it's those things that I want to take into account and to experiment with. I know these teams are going to be good cookie cutter ones, but I know there's going to be people who are figuring out something else even better. The thing that's probably going to worry me the most is the crab and the way you want to optimize your damage. Because the crab does not hit hard whatsoever. You can see here, his multipliers are pretty low, like 3,638 base damage, and then he lowers physical defense by 371. That is pretty huge, but the thing is, is he'll probably barely get off his skill 1 by the time it pretty much lasts. This 6 second stun is kind of crazy. The thing is, with that 200 self range, and if you're wondering, where am I getting this information? It's all going to be right here on like the pre-calc sites. I pretty much translated it so that's in English, and I have like the settings, like it's in JP right now, in case you're wondering because the EN stuff isn't available yet. You can have it so that essentially when the crab hits, your archers will stay safe in the background or for example Kyoka stay safe in the background so they do not get stunned it'll be important to bring like more you know front facing units to have that situation to be avoided because of course archers have to stay as far back as possible obviously if you bring someone like Makoto that might change up their position so they might be within the 200 range of the crab and whatnot but it's just something to look into in case you want to avoid stuns with positioning and stuff right because a lot of times when it comes to these bosses positions and the the slots that they are at matter quite a bit but roughly like covering like the three bosses orc i think is going to be the most probable one to kill you the unicorn might be like the closest second just manipulate whoever is getting get hit with like the highest attack so you know for my example earlier Hyori would be like the one who has the highest attack and then sometimes Kaori would get the hits in some situations right obviously June wouldn't never get hit because she never has like the highest attack and stuff and then for someone like the crab I think you can go like very very aggressive now because what's interesting in enraged crab mode they would run someone like Eriko 5 star as we all know Eriko is one of the squishiest units in the entire game so uh, Eriko being a phase tank for even a mage team this is purely because of the fact that the person knew the crab cannot deal that heavy damage all right with that all being said hopefully that makes sense be aggressive as possible when it comes to this crab boss feel like he might be one of the weakest bosses don't hold me to that because we don't know until the clan battle actually starts anyways let's go ahead and jump into some pvp as we always do and just talk about a few things when it comes to the unicorn and the crab i think the crab is gonna be one of the easier fights maybe even easier than like the actual pigs because because you can run someone like Yukari to pretty much manipulate a few things, you know, have like a little bit of a magic barrier to avoid a situation where your boss is going to be killing you. A lot of the times when we fight like some bosses like, you know, the crab, usually there's like some sort of gimmick when they go in rage mode. This dude just has a reduced physical defense, a magic attack, and he has a stun. One of those things where it doesn't feel like he's going to hit too hard because he's so balanced in attack. Usually what you have to worry about when it comes to these bosses is that they have one particular stat that's obscenely high. His attack actually only goes to like up to 5k on lap 2. So to me, it doesn't feel like he'll be that big of a threat. But who knows? I'm more scared of honestly the Orc Chief because the Orc Chief kind of traumatized me in Minotaur time. And also the fact that people are willing to run like Eriko when the crab is enraged. I'm talking about like this situation right here. You know, specifically it says enraged crab run Eriko. It's just really weird for me to see that because that means to me 5 star Eriko should technically be able to live all of the hits. Who knows in that situation? Because you really can't understand how an enraged boss works. Because 
in pigs last time, people were actually running more aggressive comps when the pigs was in raid. Like they would actually remove some of their tanks. It was interesting just to see how people were getting more DPS from enraged pigs versus like enraged minotaur that we've seen in the past where enraged minotaur would absolutely decimate anyone who tried to take advantage of him. But granted, you know, Minotaur is one of the worst bosses in the entire game. I'm going to be interested in the Unicorn because he reminds me a lot of Cyclops. The more that you can manipulate him, obviously the archers are going to be key if you want to keep your Kauri and pretty much Makoto alive and not get hit whatsoever because archers have the highest attack and they have a lot of self boost. Like, Susanna would be perfect for pretty much debating the Unicorn. But who really knows because at the end of the day, when it comes to magical attacks, usually they don't hit hit as hard you know magic attacks they never miss as well so there's that what's funny was when i was reviewing some of the unicorn stats is that his magic attack is actually higher than the crab's physical attack it's just weird that the fourth boss almost has just as high like attack power as the actual like enrage or the last boss that we're going to be fighting i just think that's interesting but it really goes to show how like this fight that we're walking into or this clan battle is going to be one of the easier ones as far as dealing damage. So this is going to be less about tanking and more about dealing DPS because I think I'm just traumatized from when the Minotaur is so hard and our teams were so underprepared for the situation. But this clan battle, we have a little bit of time to pretty much farm gear, sort of, but mostly to increase our player level before we actually get to clan battle. I want to say good luck to everyone who's part participating in the clan battle most of all i feel like the competition is going to be a lot bigger because from what's been happening a lot of the clans keep combining together to pretty much become super clans so as we get farther and farther in princess connect the top 50 are gonna get like more solidified but good luck to everyone i hope you found a clan we might be also recruiting for one spot within the clan let me know if you're looking for a clan we're looking for anyone who has like a june plus makoto but anyways, if you made it this far in today's video, consider subscribing, dropping a like, leaving a comment, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. Once we have 20,000 subs, we'll be doing a giveaway. Good luck in climb battle. Thanks so much for watching and have yourself a fantastic day. See you in the next one.